In this lesson, we're going to start Chapter 8, Section 1, learning about the Law of Sines. So the Law of Sines is a way that you can solve a triangle that is not a right triangle. So the non-right component of these notes is super critical, okay? And so remember that when it was a right triangle, okay, if you had a right triangle and you needed to solve it, you could solve some things using Pythagorean theorem, or you could solve using SOHCAHTOA, the trig ratios, okay, which is how we did it. But those were specifically for right triangles. In this case, we're talking about triangles that are not right. And so these are triangles whose none of their angles is 90 degrees. Um, you're either going to be given angle, angle, and non-included side. So that would be like angle A, angle C, and non-included side A you're going to be given in the second one, you're going to be given angle, side, angle. That means like angle, angle, and included side. Okay, that's your second scenario. And the third one is side, side, angle. So you're going to be given like a side, a side, and a non-included angle. Angle C would be included, but that's not what this is about. It's a non-included angle. And that particular scenario is tricky. It can be ambiguous. Sometimes the answers are going to you have three different possibilities of like how that triangle could play out. And so we're going to get to that last, but we're going to start with um, just the main idea. Okay. So first of all, what the law of sign says is that you can use proportions to solve the missing parts of the triangle. And the proportions that you're going to use are going to involve the length of the side over the sign of its angle. So the this would be little a, meaning the side, the length of the side opposite angle a, okay? So little a over sine a is going to be equal to the same ratio of little b over the sine of angle b, and that's going to be equal to the length of little c over the sine of angle c, okay? And so you're going to have these three relationships here. They're going to be the same uh, ratio. So what's going to happen is you can use any two of them to solve for a missing thing. You're going to be given some combination like A and little a, angle A and little a, capital letters represent the angle, little a or lowercase a represents the side length. You're going to either be given big A and little a, or you're going to be given big B and little b, or you're going to be given big C and little c. And then you'll set up your proportion uh, related to that and use proportional math. So let me show you how that goes. So right here, I've got a situation where they give me a triangle. So first of all, I'm going to draw a triangle. And it doesn't matter where I put angle A, angle B, and angle C. What matters is that the side opposite big A is little a. The side opposite big C is little c and opposite B is little b. And by opposite, I mean the side opposite it, okay? So I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to see what's been given. I know to solve a triangle, I need to identify angle A, angle B, and angle C. And I need to find side A, side B, and side C. So I'm going to look at what's been given to me. And I noticed that they gave me 120, 102 degrees for angle C. They gave me 29 degrees for angle B, and they gave me 28 feet for the length of side B. So side B is 28 feet, angle C is 102 degrees, angle B is 29 degrees. So there's all my given. And if I want to compare it to what I was shown in the beginning, this would be angle, angle, and non-included side. So this is an AAS scenario. <clears throat> and this is pretty basic. I'm going to start with what I know about right triangles, and I know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C have to add up to 180 degrees, right? So if B is 29 and C is 102, I know that this is going to be, you know, 131 equals 180, well, A plus, sorry. And so I know that A is going to be 180 minus 131, or it's going to be 49 degrees. So angle A is 49 degrees, okay? And so there I am at, um, I've solved all the degree measures of my triangle. Now I'm going to do the sides. And so when I go to do the sides, 
I'm going to work on those ratios. Now, obviously, I want to use a pair that I currently have. In other words, I know that I have the combination of B up there and side B, right? So when I do this, I know that I'm going to do um, little b over sine of b, and it's going to equal, again, little a over sine of a, and it's also going to equal little c over sine of c. So because I have b, that's the one I'm going to use. I always try to use the one that they give me. So 28 feet over sine of angle 29. Okay, I have 29 degrees. Now remember that that um, sine of 29 is in degrees, so you got to make sure your calculator is back in degrees. So I'm going to use what I have, and I'm now going to work on finding A. So little a, I don't know, but I know that the sine of big A is sine of 49 degrees. So how you solve proportional math, remember you cross multiply. You do A times the sine of 29 degrees equals 28 times the sine of 49 degrees. And again, if I'm solving for A, I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 29 degrees. Right? So A is going to equal this. So I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to get A is approximately equal to 43.59. And since the units of measure are feet, I know it's feet. Okay, so I know A, let me put it, the ones I calculate, let me put those in red. A is approximately equal to 43.59 feet. And now I'm going to do the same thing for B, so again, or C rather. So now I'm going to do again, I'm going to do the same ratio I started with, little b over sine of angle B is going to equal little c over the sine of angle C, which is 102 degrees. So again, C times the sine of 29 degrees equals 28 times the sine of 102. And I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 29 degrees. So I'm going to get that C is approximately equal to 56.49. Now it told me to round to the nearest hundredth, which is why I'm rounding to that. So 56.49 feet, and it's an approximate because it's been rounded. And I just solved the triangle using those ratios. So this is scenario one where I have angle, angle, side. When I come over to here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do my triangle. I'm going to draw it. I'm going to start them all the same way, A, B, C. I'm going to be sure to put little b and little c in the right spot, little a. And I'm going to write down what I've been given. And I've been given that A is 43, B is 98, C, I, you know, the angle, I don't have it, little a, I don't know, little b, I don't know, and little c is 22 feet. So when I come over here, A is 43 degrees, uh, B is 98 degrees, and little c is 22 feet. So when I look here, notice that I have angle A, angle B, and the included side. So this is angle, side, angle scenario. Okay, and that's totally fine. Angle, angle, and the included side right there. Um, <clears throat> and so again, this is still going to use those same ratios, right? Everything's going to use those ratios. And so um, right now, I don't really have a relationship between an angle and a side, but I do know that I can solve for angle C because I know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C equals 180. So I know that this is 141 plus C is 180. And if I subtract 141 from the side, I'm going to get 39. So I know C is 39 degrees. And so that's the first thing that I found or the first thing that I solved for. Um, once I do that and I get my 39 degrees, then I'm ready to start solving. So I noticed that this combination is what they gave me. You know, this is the one that I have. So I'm going to use that for everything, okay? So I know that I'm going to do um, 22 feet over the sine of 39 degrees is going to equal, let me work on B now, I'm going to do little b over the sine of 98 degrees, okay? And so again, I'll do my cross multiplying. So B sine 39 degrees equals 22 sine of 98. 
And if I divide both sides by the sine of 39, that's going to cancel and it's going to leave me with B. So I know that B is approximately equal to 34.62 when I do the math. And again, make sure that you're getting these values on your calculator, okay? That when you do the math and you do 22 times a sine of 98 divided by the sine of 39, you're getting the right answer, okay? And so again, now I found my B is 34.62. Now, because this is a rounded answer, I'm not going to use that ratio to find C. I'm going to use the one that I was given at first because that one's already set. I know it's correct. I know there's no mistakes in it. And I don't want to run the risk of me making a mistake in my math, okay? So 22 over the sine of that equals little c. Whoops, which, not little c, sorry little a. I'm finding little a now. Little a over the sine of 43 degrees. So once again, a sine of 39 degrees equals 22 sine of 43 degrees. And if I divide both sides by the sine of 39, I'm going to get little a. And little a is approximately equal to 23.84. So approximately equal to 23.84 feet. And one thing you can do is you can just double check, you know, make sure that the um, largest angle and the side opposite it is the longest side. Your smallest angle is 39. Make sure the side opposite is your smallest side. Make sure, like, use reasoning for some of it just to make sure you might be, that you're on the right path. Again, that's this one. Now we're going to get to the ambiguous cases, and you're going to see, like, there's a lot of wording here, but bottom line is, is that when you have side-side angle, two sides and a non-included angle, um, you have the potential of having either one triangle solution, okay, maybe even a right triangle, no triangle at all, or two triangles, and I'm going to show you how to solve for them as we go. So this is a scenario, and I'll show you how it's different, right? So we're going to start out by just drawing one triangle. We're going to assume it's as we've been doing before. We've got A, B, and C. Uh, side A is 22 meters. Side B is 12 meters. And angle A is 42 degrees. And so I notice that I have two sides and a non-included angle. So it's the special scenario that's going to keep me kind of on my toes, kind of trying to figure it out. I have an established relationship here because I have big A and little a. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that as my ratio. And so I'm going to start and I'm going to say, okay, I've got um, 22 over the sine of 42 degrees is equal to, and I notice the only other side I have is B. So I'm going to work with B. So it's B over sine of angle B. I'm still going to cross multiply like I've been doing. That's not going to change. I'm going to get 22 times the sine of B equals 12 times the sine of 42. And I know if I divide by 22, I'm going to get that the sine of B equals this value. Now, when I do that, right, I'm going to get 0.36. 498 on my calculator. So the sine of some degree measure B is equal to that, to that 0.36. Remember that I'm looking for angle B, so I'm going to have to do the inverse of that number, that decimal, to get me the actual angle B. And when I do that, angle B is equal to 21.4, okay? So I have an angle for B, okay? I have 21.4. Now this is the tricky part. In this step right here, I'm saying that the sine of some angle is 0.364. It's a positive value. Well, I know that there's two uh, degrees that are gonna give me a positive sine of 0.364. One is in quadrant one, and one is gonna be in quadrant two. So when I get this 21.4, this is like my reference angle. So in quadrant one, 21.4 degrees is one angle that is going to give me that sign. However, in quadrant two, I'm going to have another one. It's gonna be 180 minus 21.4.
and it's going to equal 158.6 degrees. This is a potential second angle for angle B. So I could possibly have two triangles here. So I have to kind of reason this out. I'm going to call this triangle 1. And in triangle 1, I'm going to use this B. And I'm going to see if it's possible. If A is 42 degrees and angle B is, as we said, 21.4 degrees, then what would angle C be? Is that something that's possible? And it is. When I do the math, I see that angle C is 116.6 degrees. This is a valid triangle. So I can use what I've got, um, and I can solve the rest of this first triangle. So I'm going to kind of erase this, right? Um, and I know, again, I was given little a is 22 meters, little b is 12 meters, and little c is what I need to solve. So if angle, you know, angle A, I'm going to use this as my basic relationship, right? That's the main one. So I've got 22 over sine of A, which is 42 degrees, is going to equal little c over the sine of angle C that we just figured out, right? Um, and so I'm going to do my cross multiplication. C sine 42 equals 22 sine 116.6 divide by sine of 42, and I'm going to get what C is approximately equal to. And when I do it, I'm going to get 29.4. And so I'm going to get that C is 29.4 meters. Now let me just double check my math here. Again, 22 times the sine of 1.6 sine. So I'm going to get 19 is my numerator divided by the sine of 42. Yeah, 29.4. And so I just solved the triangle, but that's triangle one. Now I need to ask myself, could there potentially be a second triangle here? And so I have to consider the possibility of a triangle two. So again, angle A is set. It's 42 degrees. Angle B is potentially, right, this is a second possible angle, 158.6. Does this work? Well, if I add 158.6 plus 42 degrees, I'm already at 200.6 degrees, and I don't even have a third angle. So this is, this is not valid. I can't have 158 degree angle B here. So I can't have a second triangle here, so I only have the one, and this would be the answers to it. Okay, but for all of these problems, these side side angles, you have to come up with your two possible angles and you have to test them and see if they're possible, if they work in a triangle setting, then you have to find the other missing parts. So here we have another triangle. Again, we're not real sure what we've been given yet, but we have to sort of, at least I do, I have to kind of draw it out. Little a is 15 feet, little b is 25 feet. And angle A is 85 degrees. And so I know this is, again, another side-side not included angle. Um, again, I know my existing relationship or my established relationship is the A's. So I'm going to work on that. So I know that I'm going to do um, 15 over sine of A is equal to little b over sine of angle B. So again, I've got 15 sine B equals 25 sine of 85 degrees, and I'm going to divide both sides by 15. So I've got that the sine of angle B equals 1.66032. And so when I get to here, I'm like, oh, I need to do the inverse of that. I need to figure out what angle has a sine of 1.66032. Now, some of you might have already noticed that this is a no solution. And the reason is because the sine of any number has to be between negative 1, right, sine, and positive 1. It has to be in between negative 1 and positive 1, and this is 1.66. It's out of the boundaries. If you type it in your calculator and you do the inverse, you're going to get an error message. So your calculator will alert you to this scenario, but this is a no solution. So guess what? I can't solve this triangle, okay? Um, 
So again, that's one of your other options. Remember, we talked about the fact that this type of problem will either give you no triangle, like here, there's no triangle, or one triangle, like in the last example, or potentially two triangles, like our next example. So again, here we come in and, you know, when we start, we don't really know what we're dealing with. We always have to sort of do the same thing. So ABC, little a is 12 meters, little b is 31 meters, and angle A is 20.5 degrees. So again, I have this established relationship, which I'm happy about because that's what I'm going to do to start this. I'm going to start with little a over the sine of angle A equals little b over the sine of angle B. So I've got 12 sine B equals 31 times the sine of 20.5 degrees, and I'm gonna divide both sides by 12. So I know the sine of B is going to equal 0.9047. I know it's in the range, so this is not gonna be a no solution. I'm gonna put it here and do the inverse and I'm going to get my reference angle in quadrant one. My reference angle is 64.78 degrees. So this is my reference angle. So again, if I'm thinking in my quadrants, I know in quadrant one, angle B is going to be 64.78 degrees, and in quadrant two, it's 180 minus 64.78 degrees, which is going to equal 115.22 degrees. So this is the other, these are the two possible values for angle B. So I have to think about that. I might have two triangles here. In triangle one, I'm going to test it. Angle A is 20.5 degrees. Angle B, I just figured out, was 64.78 degrees. And angle C is going to equal 94.72 degrees and that's totally acceptable that's a valid triangle so now i have little a is 12 meters little b is 31 meters and little c is what i'm going to calculate so i'm going to use the existing ratio of 12 over sine of 20.5 and i'm going to do little c over sine of angle c which i calculated as 94 0.72 degrees. So again, cross multiply C sine 20.5 equals 12 sine of 94.72. And I'm going to divide by the sine of 20.5. And I'm going to get little c. And it's going to equal 34.15. So 34.1, not degrees, sorry, meters. 34.15 meters. And again, the biggest angle is opposite the longest side. The smallest angle is opposite the shortest side. So I think that's pretty accurate, okay? Now I need to contemplate and see, can I have another angle? Can I have um, the 115.22 from that triangle? So let me consider the idea of a second triangle. So a triangle two, again, A is going to be uh, 20.5 that hasn't changed but b could potentially be 115 22. now let's see if that works out can i get a valid answer for c so 180 minus 115.22 minus 20.5 and i know that c is 44.28 degrees so guess what this is a valid triangle so there is two triangles in this problem so we have side side a and this is going to be a two triangle solution. Um, again, little a is still 12 meters. Little b is still 31 meters. Little c is what I'm looking for. So again, I'm going to use my established relationship. 12 over sine of 20.5 equals c over the sine of 44.28 degrees. So again, I'm going to get uh, c sine 20.5 equals 12 sine 44.28. If I divide by sine 20.5, I'm going to get little c. So little c is approximately equal to 23.92. So 23.92 meters. Again, still the longest, no, this is the longest side. 
uh, the shortest side is off uh, opposite the shortest and this is in the middle and so again this is fine as well so these would be solving the triangle you have to solve two triangles in this problem so these are pretty much all the skills um, that we need for this first part we're doing this in uh, probably in two lessons uh, there's a couple examples here that I still want to go over so again here is another example of the same again we start with our triangle we do our a we do our b our c a is 31 little a is 12 centimeters um, little b is 5 centimeters and again notice you have two sides and the included angle or that not the the non-included angle and again you're going to have to do your ratios right and so um, I'm going to try to find B here, right? So A is 31. I need to find B. I need to find C. I still need to figure out how many even triangles I have. So I'm going to do 12 over sine of 31 is going to equal uh, 5 over sine of angle B. So I'm going to get 12 sine of angle B equals 5 times the sine of 31 degrees. And I'll divide by, by 12. Okay, so I'm going to get the sine of angle B equals the sine of B equals 0 0.214599, let's say. And I'm going to do the inverse to find the actual reference angle or angle in quadrant 1 for B. And I'm going to get that angle B equals 12.39 degrees. Now again, in quadrant 1, it's 12.39 degrees. That means in quadrant 2, it would be 180 minus that, which would give me 167.61 degrees. So that's my second possible angle. So now I have to come and solve the triangles. So I'm going to have to figure out, you know, are these triangles valid? So let me just kind of think about it in terms of... Um, Oops, let me move that over. Let me think about this in terms of triangle one, okay? So triangle one right now, if angle B is 12.39 degrees, then angle C would be 136.61 degrees. And so those three angles represent a valid triangle. So I'm going to now use, I already know that A is 12 centimeters, little b is five centimeters, and little c is the only one I have left to solve for. So I definitely am going to solve for that one, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I also am going to see if the other angle is potentially a valid triangle. So could I possibly have a second triangle? Well, angle A is still 31 degrees. The second possible value for my angle is 167.61. And then I have to think about, well, what is angle um, C going to be? Now, I see that this together is 198.61. So guess what? This is not a valid triangle. It already exceeds the 180, and I haven't even gotten to angle C. So this is only going to have the one triangle. So this particular one is going to be a one triangle solution. So I'm just going to erase this since I'm not using that and I'm just gonna solve for little c. And so again, I'm gonna use the, the relationship they gave me at the beginning. Uh, they gave me the 12 for little a, and they gave me the 31 for the angle a. So 12 over sine of 31 is gonna equal little c over the sine of angle c, which was 136.61 degrees. And so when I do the math, again, c sine of 31 equals 12, times the sine of 136.61, and if I divide by the sine of 31, I'm going to get little c. And I'm going to get approximately 16.01. So 16.01 centimeters is the length of little c. And that's it. So we solved the triangle, and we're going to go to, I think we have one more slide. We've got one more problem here. And so again, we're gonna solve the triangle. We're gonna start assuming we've just got our regular uh, one triangle. Um, little c equals 29 meters. We have little b over here is equal to 46 meters. 
and we have angle C is 31 degrees. So again, I've got a side-side angle scenario. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve for angle B first, okay? So I know that, again, little c over the sine of angle c is going to equal little b, which is 46, over the sine of angle b. And so, again, I'm going to do my cross product. So 29 sine of b equals 46 sine of 31. And if I divide by 29, I'm going to get the sine of angle b equals some decimal. The decimal that I got is 0 0.81696 or something like that. And then I'm going to do the inverse sine of that to actually find angle B, which is going to be 54.78 degrees. This is my reference angle. Again, I know I have two quadrants. So in quadrant one, the angle is the reference angle. And in quadrant two, it's 180 minus 54.78 which is going to be 125.22 degrees. So those are my two possible angles for B. So for sure, I know this one's probably going to work. Let me just kind of write this down. So angle A, we don't know yet. Angle B, let's make this triangle one, right? Angle B is 54.78 and angle C is 31. Okay, these are degrees, right? So I know that angle A is going to be 180 minus 54.78 minus 31, and I'm going to get 94.13 degrees. And so these are valid. So this is definitely a valid triangle. Triangle one is gonna happen. Uh, little a, I don't know what it is. Little b is 46 meters, and little c is 29 meters. So all I need to solve for is little a. So I might as well just solve for that really quickly. Uh, again, I'm going to use the original relationship they gave me, the ones that had everything included. So I know that's going to be little c over sine of big C, and it's going to equal little a over the sine of angle a, which is that. And so again, I'm going to do my cross products, a sine of 31 equals 29 sine of 94.13, and I'm going to divide by the sine of 31. So when I do the math, I'm going to get that side A is approximately equal to 56.16 meters. So 56.16 meters. And again, you do a little quick check. You know, my smallest angle is 31, and my shortest side is the one opposite that. And my largest angle is 94. And my shortest, my longest side is opposite that as well. So that kind of makes sense. So triangle one is completely solved, and those are the solutions for it. Now, the possibility exists that there's a second triangle, right? So again, if there's a second triangle, I know that my A value is still unknown. My B value would be 125.22. And my C value, I started with 31, okay? And so let me see if that makes sense. What would angle A be? It'd be 180 minus 125.22 minus 31. And A is 23.78 degrees. So guess what, guys? There's a triangle too. Okay, A, B, and C are valid. Um, again, I need little A. I have little B. It's still 46 meters. And I have little C. It's still 29 meters. So I'm going to do my ratios. I'm going to do the 29 over sine of 31 equals, and I'm going to do little a over the sine of angle a, which in this case is 23.78 degrees. So a sine 31 equals 29 sine of 23.78. And if I divide by sine 31, I'm going to get little a is approximately equal to 22.70. So 22.70 meters. And again, if you notice, we're going to still check, notice that it's smaller than it was in this one over here, but it should be because notice now this is the smallest angle and that's the shortest side. So again, my values make sense. And these are the solutions to triangle two. So that one had two 
triangles, and those are the two sets of values for them. Um, the last couple of slides are going to depend are going to focus on the area of an oblique triangle. So again, you know we're used to doing area uh, is of a triangle is half base times height, but the base and the height are perpendicular to each other. Well, in this case, we're going to the A stands for area. Okay, so the area of this triangle, and you're going to use the formula depending on what's given. If you know this is basically for this one, you're going to be given side B and side C and you're gonna be given angle A, okay? Um, here, you're gonna be given A and B and the other angle. So notice how the formula works. The formula works by taking the two sides that you're given and then the sign of the angle that is not those. Like in other words, the side opposite angle B, or side B is angle B, the side opposite uh, side C, or the angle is angle C. So all three letters are represented in this, okay? Two letters, two lowercase letters represent the sides, and the letter that's missing is gonna be the angle that you're working with, okay? So you're gonna use the formula depending on what's been given to you. So again here, find the area of the triangle and round to do two decimal places. So notice that you've been given A and B and angle C. So again, the area, okay, is going to be half a, B times the sine of C. It's that formula. So it's just going to be half of A is 90, B is 52, times the sine of 102 degrees. And so you're just going to go to your calculator and type all that in. Okay. So right here, this is 2340 times the sine of 102 degrees. And I'm going to get, I'm going to get 2000 288.87 meters squared. Remember, it's square meters because it's an area question. And that's it. So again, here, you've been given A, you've been given B, and you've been given angle C. And so again, the area is going to be half of side A times side B times the sine of angle C, which is 80 degrees. So this part right here is 336 times the sine of 80 degrees. And when I multiply it together, I'm going to get 330.90 yards squared is the area. So again, you're going to be given two sides and you're going to be given an angle that's not opposite of any of those. And you're going to just plug them into this formula and shoot out the answer. It's that simple.